Hello and welcome to class number 46. We're going to do things a little bit differently today. We're still going to learn some patterns, but I'm going to set it up a little differently. So I'm going to start with a uh, right angle up here. So just the top line, and then I'm going to pick the left side. If you're more of a right hand or right side person, that's totally fine. And then we're going to start by drawing a little bit of a double line. It's not quite in the corner. Uh, actually, nope, you know what? I forgot one side. So scratch that out a little bit from the corner. I'm going to draw an arch. I'm sorry about that. I forgot about this part. So it's just a solid line from side to side, just like that. And on top of that, on the, the towards the peak, I'm going to draw a wavy line that touches the line and then comes out. So it's maybe only about a half inch. Um, I wouldn't make the waves super spiky. You kind of want them to be gradual waves, something like this. Just keep going until you get to the edge. I'm going to draw a double line in here so that this wave is kind of doubled up, so it's going to be a white, uh, a white wave. It's really hard for me not to touch the lines, but the, the double white waves shouldn't touch each other. Like you can kind of see I messed up a couple times, but I'm sure you will understand. It's okay. All right, so the outside, this top part, what I call the outside of the ruffle, is I'm just going to draw some straight lines. Well, I guess they're slightly arched a little bit from side to side, just to kind of fill that in. This line does not go to the peak, it's down maybe about a third of the way. So you can, and again, you can fill this in however you want. You can use a pencil and fill this side in with a solid gray line, or you can add color here. Um, you could put circles in here, like those little, what I call river rocks. You could fill it with that if you'd like. Instead of these lines, I'm just doing the, the simple lines. That's the design I saw, and I thought it was kind of neat. So that's what I'm drawing here. So on the other side of the wave, the one that's against the solid arch line, I'm going to color that whole thing in black. So again, I'm not coloring in the white wave itself, the double lined area, so I'm going to keep that white. I'm just going to color in the background or the, the other space behind that. So that's about it. That's the ruffle design. It's kind of a border in between the sections. Now I'm going to go back to what I originally drew, and I'm going to draw, basically divide this section into little wedges. So I'm just going to draw a double line here, so it's going to go from the almost to the corner. It's not quite in the corner. And then I'm going to just kind of mess up there a little bit, but you just want the lines to be parallel, so it's just kind of a separation line. I'm going to divide this into five sections. So I'm going to draw four lines. And there's my third. Actually, I'm going to draw it. I'm going to divide it. One, I'm going to do one more. So four, four sections. There we go. So you can keep dividing this and make it um, as, as small as you'd like. I'm just going to do these four sections. Excuse me. So now in between these uh, separation lines, I'm going to draw little arched lines. They're not very close together. You kind of are doing, I don't know, it's maybe a quarter of an inch. Not quite that. It's whatever you feel good with. You just don't want them to be super, super close together. And I'll show you why when we start to fill them in. So I'm just going to do a slight arch from side to side in each section. And now when I go to the next section, I want my arches to line up with the same, with the one to the left. So I want to have the same number of arches in each section. You see how they kind of, they're not perfect, but they kind of line up or start when the other one ends. So you want to have them be you see me want the same quantity of arch, arches in each section.
So this first, I'm going to skip the very, very first one, and I'm going to color in the second one black. I'm just going to color the whole thing in. Um, for the other larger sections, I'm going to show you kind of a, um, like a glare type of effect. So this one's kind of small too. I think I'm just going to color that, that whole one in. If they're really, really tiny, um, don't, I wouldn't even bother. It's a lot of work. So now from this one here, it's a little bit bigger. I'm just going to kind of draw these little lines that come in from the outside wall. And I'm not going to color the very center. This is, it's kind of like a scribbled type of fill. If you're just using a pen, um, it might not work quite so well, or you may have to do a lot more lines than you would have to do um, if you're using a marker of some kind. So it's a little bit easier to get this effect if you're using a marker or a thicker type of um, felt tip pen of some kind. Um, but what you can kind of see it now that I'm getting out into these larger sections, that the outside edge is completely black, and as I get to the middle, it's going to create kind of like that glare, like there's a light above it, and it has that white, <clears throat> excuse me, white glare line on there. So this is completely optional, but it makes it look really neat once they're all filled in. Um, so again, the outside edges are completely solid, and as you come to the middle, I'm just doing a bunch of lines right next to each other to fill it in, and it's just kind of scribbled in, so it's not completely solid or anything like that. So in the next section, I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to fill in the same the same ones I filled in here. So it's not going to be a checkerboard pattern. Um, you can certainly change it and make it that way if you'd like, but it's just going to be the same line, or excuse me, the same rows are going to be colored in with that same effect all the way across. So now that I get out to the end one on here in my last section, I can see that I either don't have the same number of uh, arch sections in this side because you can see my, my colors don't line up, my colored sections don't line up. Um, so you kind of want to make sure, it, look, it look, just looks a little, it's a little bit more noticeable when they don't line up. So you can kind of see <laughs> what not to do maybe. Um, but again, if that's the look you're going for, you certainly can, can do it. So I didn't have mine lining up in that center section, but that's all right. You, you can't really notice it unless you say something. So I'm going to switch over to a pencil for this next section here, and I'm just going to draw, actually, I'm going to draw the outside edge. So this is the outside uh, line 
for the next pattern. So it's just kind of an arch like the first one we drew. So that's my outside line for this next pattern. I'm going to use a pencil and I'm very lightly going to draw a center line of there. And then I'm going to draw some radiating lines. They're probably about a half inch or so apart all the way out. And they're closer up here than they are out here. So as you get further out from the center point, they should get a little bit wider. It should naturally happen that way, but sometimes it's hard to visualize that. So I'm not sure how well you can see it Oops, on, on the video, but that's the general idea that they're closer at the top here. So now we're going to draw a grid pattern. I'm going to do some square grids. They're just these little teeny tiny squares, as you can see. I have room for four of them. You may only have room for two or three. I try to get three, but um, I'm going to do four. So I'm just going to kind of keep my spacing the same. The width should be the same as the height. Mine are a little bit wider uh, than they are tall, but that's okay. It's no big deal. Just kind of keep it consistent. I'm going to go all the way across over the pencil lines, keeping my spacing approximately the same as I arch around. Now this is the basic part for any weave pattern. So in these first two sections, I'm going to go above the line. I'm going to draw a line from dot to dot above the, the squares, and then below the squares, and then above the squares, and then below the squares. And now in the next row, I'm going to do the opposite. I'm going to go below the squares, above the squares, below the squares, and above the squares. And I'm going to keep alternating all the way across. It's very, very, very easy to get confused. So if this is the first time you've ever done a weave pattern, you might want to do it in pencil and then go back over in pen or marker whenever you, um, you know, to make sure that you have it all correct. Or you can be bold and brave and just go right to the pink. So <laughs> good luck. I wish you luck. So you can see I'm just alternating over, under, under, over, all the way across. So when I get to these outside edges, it's going to continue in the exact same thing. Obviously, you're just going to see a small little section of that. So I just kind of treat it as it's another row, and I'm going to go back over to the beginning and finish that as well. I never start on the very first row. I always go to the very first full row when I start a weave, just to make sure I get it right. So now I'm going to do the exact same thing, going vertically. So I'm going to go outside of the line to the outside of the line. And then inside, oh, I'm sorry, I'm going to go down one more keep it the same. And then I'm going to go inside of this next one. So inside the square to inside the square. So it's going to make that, that look. So then the next one I'll alternate. Inside the square, outside, and then I'm going to do the outside pieces on here. So again, it's very easy to get confused. Take your time. You have to think of, this, of the squares as a set of two. So you have to have um, an outside to an outside and inside to an inside going vertically and horizontal.
I think it looks very cool. It looks like it, you know, it's kind of getting bigger at the bottom. It's, just, it's neat. So what I'm going to do, just to kind of finish it off, I'm going to do another ruffle um, border on this side. It's exactly the same thing as the very first one that we did with the wave pattern. Um, I'm not doing such a great job with my wave here, but that's okay. Um, but it'll be the exact same process. So my solid line is the line of the weave, and then I'm going to have the wave go beyond that, or the ruffle go beyond that. And then double it up, put your accents on, and color in the other side, or however you've done your other side, or your, excuse me, your original pattern. So at this point you can be completely finished um, if you don't wish to do any shading. I'm going to show you some shading techniques. I'm just going to first go through and erase all of my original pencil lines. They're very light so it doesn't take much effort to erase them. It's just the, you know, those little um, ray type lines that I drew for the weave part. So now I'm going to show you some shading. Whenever you do a weave pattern, you want to shade in anywhere where it comes underneath another section of the weave. So it's just a line, a dark line right along the edge, and it fades out as I go towards the center or the raised section. That makes sense. Not how much you can see on the video either, but any area where it's 
comes from underneath another section of the weave is where you want to put uh, the shading area. Now that I have all of those finished, I'm going to turn the paper and do the same thing on the other, in the other direction. So anything that comes out from underneath these pieces, I'm going to put the shading line on, just like, just like when you go the other direction. I'm just going to flip and do the other side, or the other, the other direction. Excuse me. The final part of shading um, that I'm going to do is up on the top section here on this like spider web thing. So I'm going to pick the left side and I'm going to just basically draw a really dark pencil line right along the left side of each of these lines. And it's dark right along the, the section there and then it fades as I go more towards the left. So it's going to help create, or excuse me, it's going to help make those vertical sections pop off. So it looks like that um, checkerboard section, I guess, is behind these little raised grid pieces, if that makes sense. So I'm only doing it on the left of each of these. Obviously the very first one on my left hand there wouldn't have anything because that's the edge of the drawing. So I, it's just going to be the left of these, the, the three center lines and this one on here on the far top side, I guess, or the right side. It's really dark along the edge and it fades you can make it even more dramatic, of course, and add, you know, a really dark shad shadow there. Shadow, excuse me. I <laughs> can't talk. Um, so that's basically a good way to get some shading practice. I hope that you enjoyed our designs for tonight. These are all things that I've seen on Pinterest or seen on different types of fabric patterns and things like that. So I get my inspiration from a lot of different places. I hope that you have a fantastic week, and I hope that you're all staying healthy and happy. And don't worry, spring is just around the corner. Have a great day.